The hypocrisy in this case is astonishing. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Now, I know that there's been talk here on YouTube about Kara, which is Xana's mom, coming out and making a couple of statements regarding the situation. Now, the video that I originally saw this in didn't let the audience know where this was actually being discussed. So, luckily, people on Twitter are awesome and they post all the links to all the things. And I want to thank... Anya on Twitter because she actually posted the link under this main post from We The People, but there's actually more than one comment. So I was really glad to see the link. Now I'm going to have a link for this Facebook group in- Actually, I can't because I went to go click on the link one more time just to see if there was any more comments on it from her and guess what? It got removed. Feel free. To, to, to take a gander, okay? The hypocrisy here is disgusting. Um, it's not even an exaggeration. The same people, the exact same people that are on the Consalvis' Facebook page, giving them hugs and kisses and sending them presents and, oh, I feel so bad for you, are basically telling Xana's mom that she just needs to stop putting her grievances all over the internet because this isn't helping anything. Talk about hypocritical jackasses. Anywho, we're going to go over the post that Kara actually commented on because this face right here belongs to the professor that apparently Brian Koberger was having issues with. Now, there's been no clarifications whatsoever on what his employment status actually was at the time of his arrest. Now, everything that I have seen, and it hasn't been a lot, <laughs> but everything that I have seen definitely alludes to the fact that he was still employed at WSU. But that's going to be probably the next video that we do because now it's actually becoming even more relevant. I meant to do a video about this long, long time ago. But because we'd really got no clarification, I decided not to. But I'm going to go ahead and present to you guys, probably in my next video, the information that we do have so we can at least try to break down what they're telling us so far. Now again, this is Professor Snyder, the one that Brian Koberger was apparently having issues with. And I'm going to read what this woman posted. Ladies and gentlemen and cowardly anonymous posters, I present to you Professor John Snyder, Brian's academic supervisor in his WSU PhD program. Blood relative to Sergeant Ryan Snyder over at Moscow PD and serving board member of the Whitman County Salary Commission, where he's part responsible for deciding the sheriff's financial compensation, meaning he helps approve the budgets and says yay or nay about what's actually an acceptable expense and what's worth spending money on. So that's pretty important, actually. You'll be hard pushed to find a more influential individual with local law enforcement. What sort of a verbal reference would a man like this give Brian Koberger, I wonder, if contacted by L.E., since he was already implementing steps to have him eradicated from the criminology department before he'd even finished his first semester. Remind me, what were the litany of allegations? Weren't they a failure to meet the norms of professional behavior, a verbal altercation with the professor, and I believe Snyder is that professor, harsh grading of female students, which actually the, the students that did speak out that were you know, in Brian's class, none of them ever made comments themselves about him being sexist in his grading. The males were even saying that he was a very, very harsh grader. The women and the men had the exact same story when it came to that situation. Made female students feel uncomfortable. Just my opinion here, but I would have thought one word from Professor John Snyder could condemn a man already under scrutiny, and the fact he's evaded all scrutiny himself is quite astonishing. Now, I don't know exactly what that last statement means. I don't. But it is interesting to me, this concept, because not only would this professor be somebody that was contacted for Brian Koberger's internship? And this professor could also, because of everything that we're being told so far, be the reason Brian did not get 
the internship, okay? But someone with this much pull could easily give Brian's name to his relative, Ryan Snyder, who's a sergeant over at Moscow PD. That's very possible. And that's something a lot of people are talking about. I didn't realize all of this. I hadn't dug into Snyder and his connections and all of those things. So this is an interesting thing. And I really appreciate the fact that Zana's mom is commenting on stuff. Now, a lot of people were questioning if this was actually her real profile. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that, yeah, it, it is. So we're going to view main profile, May 2012. 2012. This profile is over a decade old. It is definitely Zana's mom. It is her official Facebook page. Now, as I mentioned, there's two separate comments here, because if you notice the one that has, you know, that everyone's basically throwing all over the internet starts with, like I said, though, that tells me that there was another comment. So I wanted to go through and check. This seems to be the first comment that she placed on this post because it states, find it very interesting as well. In fact, he should have to testify if you ask me as should every single one of the fraternity members of Sigma Chi. Now, I'm going to stop right there because Snyder is at WSU, and what she's talking about here is the frat at U of I. While we are at it, anyone who was at the grub truck and the bar that night, it is, in my opinion, only reasonable considering these people were the last people to see all of them alive. I find it very odd that none of them are speaking up about anything. I'm sorry, but it honestly blows my mind. Wouldn't you want to speak up about anything that was happening around them to help us better understand? I just do not get why everyone is so silent. That's what we've all been asking. There hasn't been, but a mom and another anonymous person come out with any sort of information. Then apparently we have a couple of frat kids talking to another channel. When isn't the first rule of fraternities is it all stays inside the fraternity? So it, it's just really hard for me to believe that that's a legitimate source. We talk about the stuff that comes from the apparent frats, but I don't really take a lot of it to heart. Now, the next comment that we're going to read from Kara is interesting because it has to do with the information that came from those 4chan posts. Now, the 4chan posts, that's pretty much the only wild thing that I kind of paid attention to. Pretty much everything else that we've talked about on this channel when it comes to possibilities, there's stance to it. There's something legit that we can literally build off of that makes complete sense besides 4chan, because the 4chan posts are about what apparently happened at the party that Ethan and Xana was at that night with who? Who? Bethany. So now we're going to go and read her follow-up comment. SMH, shake my head. Like I said, though, I find it very interesting how BK's professor or anyone who hung out with and spoke to my daughter and her friends that night have not hardly said a peep. And again, I agree. I very much agree with that. I don't know why the professor hasn't come out and said something. He was apparently trying to get him out of there. So you'd think that he would be out here in the public talking all kind of trash about Brian, but he's not, which is honestly kind of strange. Not even something like, hey, yeah, I was at the bar and saw Kaylee and Maddie spoke with him. Nothing. Or, hey, yeah, Ethan and Xana were at the Sigma Chi party. Ethan got into a bit of a scuffle with Loach, but Xana broke it up. No big deal. Nothing. Um, yeah, and I know that happened because she happened to talk to her father that night when they left the party. Now, in the comments, guys, okay? Do y'all remember a rumor going around saying that apparently Xana had called her father around like midnight that night? I heard something about that, but then it kind of just got tossed aside and nobody ever tried to clarify anything. And of course, you can't really get the families to really answer straight up questions for certain things. But does anybody remember that? And if you do, do you remember where it was originally stated? Because I would love to view the original source of that statement. 
She goes on to say, I'm not saying it had anything to do with anything. That's why I want to know more about it, though. There is a whole lot that could be said and explained and therefore help answer questions. What are if BK did not act alone? Okay, what if BK did not act alone? Which is another thing that Steve Gonsalves is open to thinking that he's not the only person that did this. So it's not surprising that she's asking the same kinds of questions, even though they're not really communicating with each other. Well, I guess we can't really say that. We don't really know what the families are really doing with this entire thing. We basically only know that Maddie's family is basically allowing the consolvices to kind of like take the lead on that. Ethan's family is completely stepping away from that entire situation, which by the way, by the way, I want to thank Chris Wells again because months and months and months ago, whenever the information about Ethan's Smile Tulips came out, he donated the $25 to the page to buy the tulips and they just shipped a couple of days ago. I'm super, super excited. Super, super excited. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to plant them. I will obviously have to check online and see what the whole seasonal process is for here in Texas, but I'm probably going to end up putting them in some sort of starter box because we're going to be moving. So I don't want to leave them here, but I want to thank Chris Wells again, and I will let you guys know the second that they get here. But back to the topic, we also don't really hear too much from Xana's family. We have Kara that comes out every now and then. She was in jail for a time, got released, and this is kind of the first time that we've seen her talking online since then. And then we know that in the 48 Hours special, Xana's father and her sister Jasmine were in there for a little bit giving, you know, a couple statements about things. But when it comes to if there was an actual conversation between him and Xana at midnight that night... I haven't seen any clarity and I really wish that there was some sort of proof on that because that's really important considering. So she goes on to ask along with what if BK did not act alone? She also asks what if he was paid by someone to do it? What if he's innocent and someone or someone's did it meaning someone else did it? There are still a whole lot of questions and not nearly enough answers. We simply do not know. I don't know. You do not know. And at the moment, none of us do. I mean, yeah, she's right. It doesn't even seem like the state really knows, honestly. Since when do we just not thoroughly investigate a crime, much less one so horrid as this one? As you can see the logic in that, then I'm sorry, and I pray to God nothing like this would ever happen to your own child. This was my daughter, though, and I want no stone left unturned. I'm going to make sure it won't be. I would hope we all would be on the same page. And again, I would implore you guys to go in and read the way that people are like responding back to her because it's a complete 180 to the way that the Consolvis family is responded to and it's actually pretty gross. Now, I do want to point something out though. In the comments, someone named Alessandra posted this. This is from another group. I'm not going to go to this group. I'm just not. I don't have the time to go down that rabbit hole. I have to clock into work. But this is Justice for Brian Koberger and look at that name. Macy May. So at some time yesterday morning, this was posted and apparently whoever this Macy May person is that's being accused of all the crap that we talked about in the previous video about the text messages between Macy May and somebody else claiming that they were going to start spreading rumors about Steve Gonsalves. If you guys don't know anything about that, that was something that was filed and posted to the official Gonsalves family page. And I'll leave a link for that video up here in the top corner. Hopefully I pointed that right direction. But this Macy May person is apparently already starting drama and taking a lot of stuff that Kara just said and kind of doing their own thing with it, which, you know, it's not surprising, but seriously, people get a hobby you know, or a job, either one. I'm actually really glad that she's out here asking questions. If the Consolvises can be out here all over the internet running amok, then why can't she be out here asking questions too? It's really insane to me the response that she's getting from this and it's probably making her feel, actually I can't even imagine how it's making her feel, probably betrayed really because the whole internet for the most part is like just consuming the consolvices in this huge like internet, you know, safety blanket. But the second that Kara comes out and says something, she doesn't have the right to question stuff. 
So because the Consolvuses look prim and proper, they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. But because Kara has a history, she can't. Some people really do need to find that Jesus that they keep preaching about. I'll leave a link in the description box for the videos where I went over the 4chan posts. Because again, that whole situation about Ethan getting into a fight and the way that it all went down and then the huge time gap we have in between Bethany apparently claiming that she saw them at a certain time and then said that they got all home at like 1:45 ish or whatever we still don't have any answers like legit answers for that big huge gap of time the same way that we really kind of don't have any information on what Dylan and Bethany were actually doing that night now we know that Bethany was apparently at the party with Ethan and Xana but if they were done at the same time and all walked back to king road or went back to king road at the same time we would know that so i would love to know when they separated when they stopped being together at the party when xana and ethan actually left the party versus whenever bethany actually left the party whenever xana and ethan actually physically got home versus whenever bethany actually got home because none of those questions have been answered and it's interesting to me that they're just totally okay with leaving this ginormous gap in the timeline because apparently according to Kara's messages it sounds like the family doesn't even know which isn't a shock honestly because the consolvuses have basically been telling us the same thing that they know what we know they only know what they've been able to dig up themselves because they're not really getting any information from the cops and yes i know that a lot of things have to be kept under wraps before the family to just be completely left in the dark for all of the families to just be completely left in the dark about pretty much everything it just doesn't seem right they should be allowed some sort of information and i mean if they are going to talk then put them under the gag order maybe there wouldn't be so much chaos if the families were actually under a gag order and also still allowed to get information because then they could feel comfortable with what's going on and they just wouldn't be able to talk about it and uh, you know if, if they felt like it was necessary to engage those consequences then i guess they could talk about it if they felt like they needed to like if they really felt like things weren't going the right way after getting some information from the cops i mean steve consolvis seems like the one to take the risk if it was necessary right but again those are the comments that she made that's the group that she made the comments in i wanted you guys to see it straight from the source not just screenshots or from the twitter links i wanted to read it to you guys straight from where she posted it and i wanted you guys to see that it was her legitimate facebook profile but that is it if you guys like this video don't forget to leave a like on your way out subscribe if you are not subscribed already see y'all